Hi, this is Scott Picaric with Verde Real Estate Group with today's landlord tip. Today we're talking about insurance, and namely landlord insurance basics. And we might drill down into a couple of topics, but with me to help explain this is Nick Ludwig. He is with Dolliff Insurance. Nick, you're a broker, correct? Correct. And what does a broker do? Oh, we're an intermediary. Obviously, we, we represent uh, customers and we act as an intermediary between the customer and the insurance company. So we try to find the best deals uh, with whatever insurance companies that we can find that will that want to do uh, the best deal for that particular risk. Find the best solution based yeah. on the individual needs of, exactly. of the individual. So, okay, well, great. So, so I am a landlord, and I am, let's just say I'm kind of new to the game. I just bought a duplex, or I'm about to close. And, well, if it's me, it's, I usually hear from me about, you know, full disclosure, I'm a customer of Nick's, and he usually hears from me about three hours before the closing. Oh, I bought a new one. Can you give me insurance? Or three hours after. Or after the closing. Yeah, worse. <laughs> True story. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so say I'm not me. Uh, I'm someone who's more responsible and, right. and thoughtful and, and, and planned out. What would you say the first step is, or what are some tips you can give? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, there's the, – what I what I think is that, first of all, you really want to pay attention to um, – the valuation of the property. You're, you're, so you're going to buy two basic coverages. You might buy some other coverages, but the two basic coverages you're going to buy is property insurance and liability insurance, right? Property insurance is protecting that structure. Right. And if you have a loan, obviously you're going to, the, the, the lien holder wants you to have property insurance as well. So if you decide, well, I don't know if I really want property insurance and you have a loan, well, your, your bank or mortgage company is, is going to make you buy insurance. Right, right. right. So, so you're going you're gonna to have property insurance, and you're also going to have liability insurance. Now, liability insurance is if something that you do or don't do causes damage or injury to a third party, right? So it could be somebody has a slip and fall on your sidewalk. Uh, it, there's many, many different things that could happen that, that are liability related. But you're going to want to have that insurance, too, because, of course, they can, you can be sued. And then uh, you, if, you, if you don't have liability insurance, you've got to pay out of pocket. Or you could even, it could be bad enough, you could even lose the property, right, if you don't have liability insurance. Are, are there any conditions that exist in a property that I should be aware of when I'm buying? Like, is there something that, let's say, an insurer won't uh, insure? Like, I, I think one that comes to mind is the Federal Pacific uh, uh, electrical boxes. Yes, exactly. You know, that, that, they're the infamous one, right? And, and right. I'm sure there's other conditions. That's but right. Are, w would that necessarily kick me out of coverage if that exists, or would that raise my risk factor, yes, i.e. my premium? It, it can mean that some insurance companies won't insure you at all if you don't have. For example, it, it could even be, sure, it could be circuit breakers, some of those old circuit breakers that were defective, but it could even be, and we still see this, you know, you still see some old properties they got knob and tube, or they have fuses. fuses yeah. yeah, they have fuses. And so, you know... I think I own one. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Insurance companies don't really like that so much, but on the general topic, this is a good topic, because, yes, when you are buying a property, think about risk when you're buying it, because it will affect your insurance premiums. And, yes, older properties, maybe they're not as uh, updated. The, all things being equal, they'll probably be a little more expensive to insure than if it's a brand new fire resistive property that's got automatic sprinkler system and it's all right. updated right so th those per hundred dollars of value or a thousand dollars of insurance probably going to be less expensive to insure are insurers looking at things i mean because they don't usually go out to the property prior to binding coverage correct? sometimes they do but it depends you're right for smaller ones Normally not. They, they, they have us go out and look at the property. They have the agent go out, and then we have to look at the property, or we'll, or we'll ask a lot of questions, or we'll say, look, at, let me, let's talk about this property, How, what kind of condition is it in. Yeah, what do they and make so you forth. look for, ask you to look for? Yeah, so the, the, some of the, the basics, right, and this is, again, common sense, but the basics are, okay, how old's the roof? How old's the electrical system? How old's the plumbing system? When's, uh, you know, how old is the furnace? All, the, all your basic systems, right? They want to know. How's the foundation? Is the foundation solid? It's got cracks. It's got problems. Do you have signs of water damage? And, again, these are th things that, of course, you as the, the owner and the buyer, you're going to be interested in anyway, right? You're right. You're going to know this stuff. So 
we want to know it too. It's kind of like a free buyer's inspection. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we want to know many of the same things because those things can ca- cause losses. They can cause hazards, you know. And so, um, so we will, and then that will help us evaluate, okay, and, you know, you might say, yeah, the roof is old, but I really don't want to replace it right now because I got other kinds of expenses when I'm buying this place. I'm going to try to hang on and not replace the roof for a couple more years. And then I might come back or we might come back and say, well, okay, so we may not be able to put you with a certain insurance company that says they only want uh, new or fairly new roofs. Right? Okay, and every and company has different criteria every for that. Every company has different are there, criteria. Are there conditions that would say they flat out just say we're not insuring? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and some people just don't like, you know, some insurance companies, more conservative property insurers, they don't like old old uh, buildings at all right okay and they because they say well you know i don't want that trouble of that you know so i it's got to be 20 years or 30 years do do things like mold asbestos come into play at times Mm -hmm. they they can you know asbestos is not as big of a deal as it used to be right Right. because a lot of that stuff is gone you hope right right it's all gone but mold is a big issue and um and it's a big issue not just from a property point of view and reducing the value of property but switching to liability insurance of course Uh, Uh, mold can be a real problem I, I, we've, I've seen claims uh, from tenants, both residential tenants and commercial tenants, that, that, that will sue the, the landlord and the owner because of, of potential mold problems. I, I used to have more of um, a laissez-faire attitude towards mo- mold, but um, you know, some, some information has come to my attention in the last couple of years. Where, you know, it's a real thing, it uh, and it's something that you as a landlord slash investor need to be aware of when you're purchasing. and. Go through these properties thoroughly. If you think there might, you know, if you if you if you smell something, there might be something there. If there's smoke, there might be fire, and make sure that you're addressing this because I anticipate it will become. And this is Scott putting on his um, uh, Johnny Carson, Karnak, Karnak, the yeah, magnificent. But yeah, the magnificent. Uh, you know, predicting that this right. will become a, a bigger and bigger issue over the next you know three four years. I think so too. You, you know, a little bit off topic, but it, it's yeah. relevant. Is that there have been a lot of studies recently coming out that, that say that indoor air quality, and you probably heard this, is that it really is horrible, you know, to, in many in many places, you know, the indoor air quality. In some cases, it's a new construction that's the worst because they're right. so airtight, right? Yeah, and so there's so many things that can affect, and you, and you do have people that I, I know people that, and I, I believe them when they say that they're incredibly sensitive to certain kinds of things, chemicals or whatever, and, and they get sick. And if and if you you don't deal with that, and if you're buying a property that you're going to rent out either for, as a residence, or it could be an office building where you've got people that are there all the, for many extended periods of time, you know, for many hours, and they're they're in one spot, you know, air handling becomes an issue, and air quality becomes an issue, and yes, as you know, if you don't deal with mold quick. It just gets to be really nasty. You know, it just grows, it and grows, grows and grows and grows right. and grows. So. so that's an issue that really is both a property insurance issue as well as a liability insurance issue. So, okay, same same guy. I'm, I'm, I'm buying this multi-unit. And anything I can do to expedite the process with you? I mean, what, do you what are you going to need from me? Yeah, I think that, the, that what I like to do, and, and this is – it, it really doesn't even matter whether it's resi- residence or if it's single family or if it's multifamily housing or commercial, is that I, if you have an inspection that's already been done or I'll try to find one or if you have a recent appraisal, in other words, you just want to get a, a lot of the basic information quick, right? Because right. uh, all that stuff is, is I use to evaluate uh, who I'm going to go to, which underwriters I'm going to talk to, who are most likely to do insure this for the best price. So the first step would be get you information on the property. Yes, right. Give you my information. You know, we can do that with yep. a phone call, email. Yeah, I could phone call, person. email. Yeah, we don't. You know, I don't need to meet a lot of times. And of course, if it's something locally, you know, you know this. Sometimes I'll say, well, you know what, I'm going to go take a run over there and look at the outside. I'm going to check it out. Right. You see, Jim, Jimmy Hoffa's. It yeah, half exhumed corpse in the backyard. Yeah, I, you know, I'll 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 see uh, what's going on, yeah. right? And uh, and then if I have some questions after that, then I then I can ask more questions, or or I can get some pictures, right? Again, nowadays with technology, it's easy to get information, right? It really is. Yeah, and that gets the process started. How long before you can get like some kind of a quote or? It depends on the uh, the type of risk and how big it is. Yep. You know, obviously the bigger. 
underwriters will take a little more time to evaluate. You know, if I'm insuring a, a, a half a million dollar or less structure, I can do it quick. Sometimes I can do it in 24 hours, right? Uh, if it's 10 million or 50 million, well, now we start to ask more questions. Many right. times that insurance companies will go out prior to giving a quote, right? If it's big enough. So do you see a lot of uh, exclusions on policies? I always like to talk yes. about exclusions because, yes. you know, exclusions are what? There, there are things where the insurance company says, we'll cover you, but except for this. Then we won't cover you for this, right? Is that clearly laid out in the policies? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> okay. Insurance company, insurance policies are, you know, they're a, they're a rat's nest. They're a, yeah. Uh, I've read a few of them, and I will tell you, it is um, you know about as good a cure for insomnia as most yes things yeah. I've ever tried. Yeah, I read them at night sometimes just for <laughs> for leisure. But no, seriously. Um, so insurance policies generally work this: they say, "Look, it, we're going to cover you, except we're not going to cover you for these things." Right. And then even in the exclusions, sometimes they'll say, "We're not going to cover you for these things, but we might cover you a little bit." For some of these uh, things, so the exclusions will even have a exception to the exclusion. This is why it gets, you know, that's why people the pull double their, negative. That's right. They put pull their hair out. But in general, there's some basic exclusions that all insurance or most insurance companies have, which either means they just won't do it for any reason, or you have to buy the coverage back, or you have to buy the coverage specifically, like flood and earthquake and uh, war and um, and things like wear and tear right so in other words if you if you have a property and you know it's just old and you got a nice wooden floor but it's worn over the years well you're not going to get the insurance company to pay to put a new floor it's in, like right? buying the extended warranty on your, yeah. your insurance on your vehicle and then finding out that yeah. <laughs> nothing's <right>. covered <laughs> That's right. and, and and also i've done that so and, and also in the case of liability insurance there's also exclusions there as well right so they'll cover They'll cover you. They'll say, look, we're going to cover you in case somebody sues you because you were negligent and they were hurt or you caused some damage to somebody else's property, right? That's the, the basics. And then they'll say, yeah, but then there's some things that we won't cover along that line. And, the, and some of them are, again, sort of common sense. So you have a, you have a property insurance policy and a liability policy, and then, and then you also have a boat or an or, or, or aircraft or a vehicle, right? And you right. say, well, I want this property liability policy to cover my, my aircraft or my watercraft. No, they're going to be excluded. And so you have to buy separate insurance for those things. What about if I hire a property manager yep. and the property manager says, hey, I have a, you know, has an indemnification clause yeah. in yeah. their property management agreement. What does that mean to me? Well, that means that... Um, Th that contract that you have with that property manager is likely to have some uh, some statement in there that says, "Look, it. If you, as the owner, cause the, the 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 negligence and the loss, and I get sued, I get dragged in to a lawsuit. Well, I'm going to expect you and your insurance, you you alone or your insurance policy, to protect me, right?" It can go both ways with these kind of contracts, right? In other words, indemnification, if you want to call it that, just means that indemnify just means that you're going to step in and protect me, right? If so I get, say if I get dragged into your say problem. you as the uh, you're the like I'm the landlord, you're my you're my property manager, and I right. say I'm not giving my tenants security deposit back, right? I don't want to because I think it wasn't wear and tear, it was damage. Whatever. Yeah. And then they sue you as the property manager because you're the face right? because I didn't get the money back. Then the indemnification clause would That's protect right. you as the property manager. That's right. Okay. Yes. And, and, and and I see now exclusions for like gross negligence, right, which you, know, you as the property manager would walk in and you know maybe one of your employees would, I don't know, shoot somebody. Let's just use that as an extreme case, right? Right. I mean, that's just... Yeah, you know, that's an extreme example, but yeah. um, generally, are these things pretty benign? These indemnification clauses or indemnification really clauses are not at all benign. They're serious business because if you have a serious, serious loss, and and uh, and you're now you're in litigation, and everybody is getting dragged in, then uh, and 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 you or depending on which side you are, it doesn't matter really which side you are. You go look at all. I I don't. I've got only this amount of insurance, but this is a big claim, 
then you very frequently see people will look at those contracts and they'll look at that identification agreement and they'll try to figure out, well, really, who, not only who is responsible, who was negligent or who was responsible for the claim, but who was really indemnifying whom, right? right. Who, who was going to pay the cost? Who's going to step in and actually pay the cost of defense and or paying the claim, right? So they, they can be real serious, and I, and I always recommend these are legal contracts, and you should definitely get legal uh, counsel and advice, talk to an attorney, somebody who's familiar with this. If you're drafting... Yeah, in a lot of ways, the insurance policy is a legal contract, right? It absolutely is. If you're not going to read it, someone should, right? That's right. And, like, is there ever built-in coverage for your manager or or agents that are working on the property? Yeah, yeah. so every insurance policy is somewhat different. There are some standards insurance policies, but I always tell people don't rely on that, well— if your agent, you know, not that I would ever say anything like this, but some agents, somebody or insurance company might say, it's a, it's our standard insurance policy, right? That isn't good enough. What does that mean? Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Right? It's our standard listing contract. Right. I mean, what what does that mean? Right. I mean, exactly. Yeah, it, it goes right. for 14 years and it's 12 percent. Right. Right. And your firstborn naming rights. That's yeah. right. And so it's always good to to ask more questions and get more details and. Yes, it's true that consumer or residential insurance home policies or auto policies tend to be a little more standardized, right? But in business policies for landlords, they're not. But but yes, so to answer your question, yes, many insurance policies, liability insurance policies, will include the property manager as an insured on that policy, right? If I was a property manager, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take that as gospel unless I looked at that policy. That you know, so if you're a property manager, you'd want to look at the policy of the, the the property that you're managing to make sure that it does say that on, in that policy, right? That's okay. a good idea because they don't all do that. There's lots of policies out there that have totally different language about all sorts of things. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So this is a really good intro. To uh, to uh, insurance from, right. uh, from a property investor, landlord perspective. Nick, if someone wants to sit down and call you or talk to you, what's the best way to get a hold sure. of you? Sure. My phone number is 952-593-7410. My email address is nludwig, L-U-D-W-I-G, at dolliff.com. That's D-O-L-L-I-F-F.com. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm Scott Picard with Verde Property Management. We hope this content has been valuable to you. As always, if you want to reach us, you can call or text at 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888, or 24-7 online at verde-realestate.com. Thank you.